नमस्कार मैं हूं दिबांजलि मोइत्रा केंद्र की मोदी सरकार पर निशाना साधने वाले अमेरिकी अरबपति जॉर्ज सोरोस पर भारत से हमला तेज हो गया पहले बीजेपी और कांग्रेस ने उनके बयान पर हमला बोला उसके बाद अब विदेश मंत्री जयशंकर ने करारा हमला किया विदेश मंत्री एस जयशंकर ने कहा कि सोरोस न्यूयॉर्क में बैठे एक पुराने अमीर और गलत विचारों वाले शख्स जो अभी भी ये सोचते हैं कि पूरी दुनिया को उनके हिसाब से काम करना चाहिए what was said at the munich conference essentially mr soros said india is a democratic country but he doesn't think the prime minister of india is a democrat uh, and uh, by the way a few years ago uh, in the same conference i was there at that time he actually accused us of uh, planning to strip millions of muslims of their citizenship which of course didn't happen it was a ridiculous suggestion but you have to understand what this actually means uh i could take a view that the individual in question mr soros is a uh old rich opinionated person sitting in new york who still thinks that his views should determine how the entire world works now if i could only stop at old rich and opinionated i would put it away but is old rich opinionated and dangerous you know because what happens is when such people and such views and such organizations they actually invest resources in shaping narratives you know i i spoke about globalization to suna aapne kya keh rahe hain jay shankar jay shankar ne aage kaha main manta hu ki soros new york mein baithe ek boodhe samriddh vicharon wale aadmi hain jo abhi bhi sochte hain कि उनके विचारों को निर्धारित करना चाहिए कि पूरी दुनिया कैसे काम करती है विदेश मंत्री ने ऑस्ट्रेलिया में आयोजित रायसेना एट सिडनी समिट में बोलते हुए ये भी कहा कि अब अगर मैं सिर्फ बूढ़े अमीर और मनमौजी विचारों पर ही रुक जाता तो मैं उसे दूर कर देता लेकिन वो बूढ़ा अमीर मतलबी और खतरनाक है उन्होंने कहा कि असल में क्या होता है ना कि ऐसे लोग जब किसी संसाधन में निवेश करते हैं तो उससे एक नेरेटिव तैयार होता है जानकारी देते चले कि इस विवाद की शुरुआत म्यूनिक से हुई जहां पर सुरक्षा सम्मेलन चल रहा था और सोरेस उसी बैठक में मोदी और अडानी पर अपनी टिप्पणी कर रहे थे उसमें उन्होंने कहा था कि प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी अडानी समूह के खिलाफ धोखाधड़ी के आरोपों पर चुप हैं। उन्होंने कहा कि प्रधानमंत्री मोदी को अपनी चुप्पी तोड़नी चाहिए और संसद में सवालों का जवाब देना चाहिए their fate is intertwined adani enterprises try to raise funds in the stock market but failed adani is accused of stock manipulation and his stock collapsed like a house of cards modi is silent on the subject but he will have to answer questions from foreign investors and in parliament isse pehle kal yani ki shukrawar ko kendriya mantri smriti irani ne american arabpati george soros dwara pm narendra modi par ki gayi tippani par press conference mein palatwar kiya tha jab bharat ko america ke rashtrapati france ke rashtrapati इंग्लैंड के प्रधानमंत्री आभार व्यक्त करते हैं कि उनके देशों में हिंदुस्तान और हिंदुस्तानियों की वजह से आज आर्थिक संबंध और मजबूत हो रहे हैं जब भारत विश्व की पांचवीं सबसे बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था बनकर उभर रही है ऐसे में हिंदुस्तान के लोकतांत्रिक ढांचे में हस्तक्षेप करने का ऐलान करने वाले जॉर्ज सुरोस को एक स्वर में हम जवाब दें कि लोकतांत्रिक परिस्थितियों में लोकतांत्रिक ढांचे से चुनी गई हिंदुस्तान की सरकार और हिंदुस्तान के प्रधान सेवक नरेंद्र मोदी ऐसे गलत इरादों के सामने सर नहीं झुकाएंगे 
जब जब हिंदुस्तान को चुनौती दी गई हमने विदेशी ताकतों को पहले भी हराया है आगे भी हराते रहेंगे बीजेपी के हमले के बाद कांग्रेस नेता जयराम रमेश ने भी शनिवार को इस मुद्दे पर जॉर्ज सोरेस को फटकार लगाई उन्होंने कहा पीएम से जुड़ा अडानी घोटाला भारत में लोकतांत्रिक पुनरुत्थान शुरू करता है या नहीं ये पूरी तरह कांग्रेस विपक्ष व हमारी चुनाव प्रक्रिया पर निर्भर है इसका जॉर्ज सोरेस से कोई लेना देना नहीं है हमारी नेहरूवादी विरासत सुनिश्चित करती है कि उन जैसे लोग हमारे चुनाव परिणाम तय नहीं कर सकते तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि कैसे बीजेपी और कांग्रेस ने मिलकर हमला किया अब हम जयशंकर की पूरी बाइट आपको सुनाते हैं लुक आई एक्चुअली मेड टू पॉइंट वन हाउ द वर्ल्ड इज चेंजिंग इट इज रीबैलेंसिंग इट इज लेस यूरो एटलांटिक I don't think everybody gets that. I think old habits die hard. I mean very candidly, uh there are there are still people in the world uh, who believe that uh, uh their definition, their preferences, their views uh must override everything else. So, since you mentioned this specific example, I I don't know how familiar people are with uh, what was said at the Munich conference where essentially mr soros said india is a democratic country but he doesn't think the prime minister of india is a democrat uh and uh, by the way a few years ago uh, in the same conference i was there at that time he actually accused us of uh, planning to strip millions of muslims of their citizenship which of course didn't happen it was a ridiculous suggestion but you have to understand what this actually means uh I could take a view that the individual in question Mr Soros is a uh old rich opinionated person sitting in New York who still thinks that his views should determine how the entire world works Now if I could only stop at old rich and opinionated I would put it away but he is old rich opinionated and dangerous you know because what happens is when such people and such views and such organizations they actually invest resources in shaping narratives you know i i spoke about globalization now what globalization does is it actually creates lot of uh, the seamlessness of globalization which creates all the opportunities also allows you know narratives to be shaped money to come in uh, you know uh, foundations uh, to go about their their agenda now in this particular case so i mean it is very clear that he has very strong political preferences he actually thinks that i mean doesn't matter that this is a country of 1.4 billion people we are almost there uh, uh, who whose voters decide how the country should run he actually thinks well if you know uh, and and again i cite him as an extreme example okay uh, but it's uh, it's there are other uh, you know manifestations of this in in different countries where people like him think uh, an election is good if the person we want to see wins if the election throws up a different uh, uh, outcome then we actually will say it's a flawed democracy uh and uh, you know uh, this to my and and the beauty is all this is done under the uh, pretense of advocacy of open open society of transparency etc so uh our generation we have grown up with concepts like regime change uh, which influence operations now you can call it what you will i mean to me uh, this really looks the same with a gloss Uh, of some kind of do goodism uh, on it so for me it's actually necessary today that you have we have today a serious conversation uh, on democracy you know uh, i i when i look at my own democracy i mean i have today a, a voter turnout which is unprecedented uh, electoral outcomes which are decisive electoral processes which are not questioned 
we are not one of those countries where after the election somebody goes to arbitrate in court. Okay, we don't have any hanging chads either. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and you know where you actually say, uh, I will sit in judgment over the verdict of voters. Now my sense of democracy is the voters are supposed to decide, and it worries us. It worries us because look, we are a country which went through colonialism. We know the dangers of what happens when there is outside interference in whatever guys uh, in your politics. If if you do this kind of scare mongering, like millions of people will be deprived of citizenship, it actually does real damage to a societal fabric. Because somebody out there believes you. And somebody, and you don't leave it to accident, by the way, you back it up with an operation. So you create that kind of fear psychosis. And then you use that to validate your original judgment. So I, I do think today between, you know, war, whose democracy, whose globalization, uh, why, you know, the transparency of how uh, global processes work. These are real issues which need to be debated.